Have you heard of the monkeypox? It has become a global concern recently, especially since World Health Organization declared it a public health emergency. And you know that just two months ago, Uganda reported its first cases. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into a topic that is making headlines and that is the Mpox, formerly known as the monkey pox. Mpox was first discovered in 1958 during two outbreaks in colonies of research monkeys and that is why it gets its name because it was first discovered in monkeys. However, the first human case was much later discovered in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This was after there was eradication of smallpox. For years we have seen that the Mpox affects primarily certain regions of Africa, mainly the West and the Central Africa. However, now it is causing a global concern because it is now going global and it is affecting countries or areas that have never experienced impacts, which is a global concern. So in this video, we are going to discuss what is impox, why and how it is spreading, signs and symptoms, prevention and treatment. Mpox is a viral disease caused by the monkeypox virus, which belongs to the same family as the smallpox. However, the Mpox causes less severe symptoms. It is a zoonotic virus, meaning the transmission is spread from animal to human through infected animals. Infected animals, we can talk about rodents, like the rats, the squirrels, the hamsters, and more. And then the primates. We can talk about the monkeys, the apes, the chimpanzees, the gorillas. And once this infection gets into the human population, it spreads through close human-to-human -human contact. So while the mpox or the monkeypox can show similarities with the smallpox, the monkeypox is less deadly. Mpox is an endemic, meaning it is constantly present but limited to a particular area. We already mentioned that it is mainly present in the Central and West Africa. And in countries like the DRC, Nigeria. And right now, as I'm speaking, the Democratic Republic of Congo is the one in Africa that has been severely hit by the impacts, reporting 6,169 confirmed cases and 25 deaths, followed by Burundi, which has 987 confirmed cases. However, no death, which is a good thing. And then Nigeria, which has 94 confirmed cases and no death. And the list goes on. So the natural reservoir of this virus, as I already mentioned, are the animals, the rodents and the primates. So if humans are in contact with the infected animals, they risk getting in pox. And when it comes to the human infection, it has been linked to the hunting and the consuming of these animals, mainly known as bushmeat. I don't know if you've heard about it. This is very, very common in the DRC. And maybe that is the reason why Uganda has also reported two cases. These were found in Kasese district in Brea Hospital and they were confirmed by the Uganda Virus Research Institute. Because remember, Uganda is just a neighbor to Democratic Republic of Congo. Maybe in the morning we're in one country, in the evening we're in a different country. Maybe there is that close human-to-human -human contact. And then also the bushmeat. Maybe it made its way to Uganda somehow. I don't know because DRC is known for bushmeat. People say that when you go there, people eat wildlife like it's a normal thing. So probably the bushmeat made its way to Kasese. I do not know. It could be one of those reasons. But now, if you've also been following the World Health Organization, you will notice that they're reporting cases in the United States, in Europe, in Asia. So the impox is moving. And this is a concern some of the reasons why we are seeing mpox cases in the non-endemic areas or areas that haven't been known to have mpox is because of globalization even as i'm speaking right now someone is booking their ticket to travel somewhere so the more people travel the more people are in contact with each other the more we are risking the spread of mpox so right now i think i will I think a week ago, I saw the U.S. warning its citizens not to travel to Rwanda because right now we know that there is an outbreak of Mabag. So it's the same thing that they do for other outbreaks. So those countries normally tell their citizens, like, in this country, there is an outbreak of this. There is a, in this country, there is an outbreak of that. So, so that they don't go to those countries. So as I speak right now, I know they've already told their citizens not to travel to Democratic Republic of Congo because right now it has the highest number of outbreaks of mpox then another thing that has led about the outbreaks of the 
mpox is a decrease in the smallpox vaccination the decline in the smallpox vaccinations what you have to know is the smallpox vaccines also provided protection against the mpox because remember we said they're in the same family so after the eradication of the smallpox in the 1980s the routine vaccinations also stopped so all the generations that came after that are vulnerable to the mpox we can easily get the mpox and lastly the environmental factors this is most common in africa there is a lot of human wildlife interaction here in africa people majestically go and build a whole house near the wildlife reserve so someone is a neighbor to a whole national park i have seen it people settle down and they're living with the animals but remember that sometimes these animals leave the reserve and maybe go out looking for food and all that stuff so you find some animals in people's gardens baboons monkeys chimpanzees in people's gardens so you're either going to fight with this animal to save your food you may get a bite or you may get a scratch sometimes you may be successful and kill this animal and you may eat the meat but are you sure about what you've eaten so also the human and wildlife interaction is leading to a lot of outbreaks because if an animal is infected with the monkeypox virus, it's going to pass it on to the human. The human, because of the close human-to-human -human contact, is going to spread it to another human. So the cycle is going to continue. There are two types of clades of mpox virus. One that is originating from Central Africa, which is known as the clad one. And one that originates from West Africa, which is known as the clad two. Now, there was an outbreak in 2022-2023, and this was caused by CLAD 2B. This is a mutated version of the less severe West African CLAD. However, right now, the outbreak that is happening right now is caused by CLAD 1B. This is the mutated version of the Central Africa CLAD. Now, this is also the CLAD that has the attention of World Health Organization, and that is the reason why it declared a public health emergency on the 14th of august 2024 the cases keep on increasing each and every day both in africa and regions out of africa countries that have never experienced this infection before so how does mpox spread or what is the transmission of mpox first of all is when you come into contact with a person or an animal that has been infected with mpox that is how it spreads the first one is person to person transmission now for example if you're a caretaker and you're looking after a person who has been infected with the mpox virus if you have not, if you have not put on like gloves or anything and you come into contact with a person's body fluids person's skin lesion because remember they normally have that rash you come into contact with a person's beddings or clothing or any contaminated object of a person who has been infected with a virus you are risking getting mpox and then also respiratory um, droplets these people who have been confirmed that they have mpox are normally advised to put on masks this is because you're protecting the other person naturally when you're sneezing there are those there are those droplets that come out so imagine if you have mpox and you sneeze and the person is directly in front of you that means you're going to be spreading the mpox so person to person transmission is very very common nowadays and then there is also animal to human transmission now here i've already talked about it if an animal bites you if an animal scratches you that has been infected with mpox or you come into contact with an animal's blood and also consume its meat if that animal has been infected with the mpox or the monkey pox the high chances that you're also going to get mpox interestingly there have also been recent reports saying that mpox can also spread through sexual contact and this is particularly through individuals that have multiple sexual partners and this is common in the non-endemic areas i mean areas that have never experienced mpox before so be careful whom you are sleeping with mpox symptoms usually appear within 5 to 21 days of exposure and they normally start with flu-like symptoms like fevers or chills headaches muscle aches and fatigue or exhaustion a key differentiator from other viral infections is the swollen lymph nodes and these ones are normally very very painful within a few days a rash develops and this starts as flat red spots and evolves into blisters filled with fluids 
These blisters can spread to the face, hands, and feet, but in some cases, they can be found in the mouth and also the genital areas. So over time, these blisters dry up, they scrap over before falling off. And the whole process takes about two to four weeks. The different stages that the rash take, and I'm going to share it right here for you. So what you have to keep in mind is not everyone with mpox is going to develop all the signs and symptoms. I'm talking about the rash and also the others. Some people may develop a rash and they may not develop any other symptoms. Or some people may have flu-like symptoms and then the rash may come or it, or it may not come. But that doesn't take away the possibility that you may be having mpox even without showing any signs and symptoms. And you may be spreading it to other people through prolonged close contact. Diagonizing of mpox is normally based on clinical evaluation, especially if there is that characteristic crush and also if there has been previous exposure to an infected person. However, to confirm this diagnosis, a polymerase chain reaction or a PCR testing is done. So samples are normally taken from the rash or the skin lesions and sent to the lab for testing. Prevention of mpox involves reducing exposure to the virus. So this includes avoid contact with infected animals. I'm talking about the sick or dead animals. Do not consume their meat. And then avoid also contact with any beddings, linen, um, any contaminated materials or objects used by the infected person unless you have protected yourself. So that brings me to the point of use of personal protective equipment, PPE. For any attendant who is caring for an infected person, protect yourself. Have on your mask and always wear your gloves when you're handling those beddings or clothing or any object used by the infected person. Then make sure that you are cooking all foods that include animal meat very, very well. And then also wash your hands with soap and water. Practice safe sex by use of condoms and then wear masks. So if a person is infected, encourage them to wear a mask that covers their nose and their mouth and also you do the same thing. Then lastly, if a person has been suspected or they're infected with mpox, avoid contact with them. Let that person isolate themselves from the public. You cannot discuss prevention without talking about vaccination. So in terms of vaccines, the smallpox vaccines offers protection against mpox. This vaccine has been approved for preventing both small and mpox. And it is being distributed in high-risk populations. For example, healthcare workers who are treating and taking care of these infected people. And also to those who have direct exposure to the virus. For example, like DRC that has an outbreak of the mpox. People there are being vaccinated. When it comes to treatment, the mpox is a self-limited disease with symptoms lasting two to four weeks meaning you can get better even without treatment. So although there is no specific treatment for mpox, most of the cases are mild and normally resolve on their own. So normally we give supportive care. We treat the pain, the headache, the fever. In severe cases, antivirals are given like the tecoverimat. It may be administered as it has shown effectiveness in reducing the severity of the symptoms. And for patients with complications, hospitalization may be necessary in order to give more supportive care like fluids and treatments to prevent secondary infections. Are there complications of mpox and is mpox fatal? It is rare, but sometimes mpox is fatal. It can lead to complications like pneumonia, echinophilitis, that is inflammation of your brain due to an infection, and also it can affect the eyes, which can be life-threatening, especially to people who are immunocompromised, like those with HIV, with diabetes, and all those serious medical conditions. So to sum all this up, prevention is key. Vaccinate if you're in high-risk areas and seek medical advice if you suspect that you have been exposed thank you for watching i remain samantha taberamo i'll see you in the next discussion